Ukrainian naval forces attacked one of the Russian gas towers in the black on the night leading to August 10, Ukrainian media reported, with reference to Dmitro Plitinchuk, spokesperson of the Ukrainian Navy. The attack on the facility, which houses technical equipment and personnel necessary for reconnaissance, was carried out by a Sea Baby naval drone. At least 40 people in the tower are said to have been killed. Plitinchuk said that a few hours prior to the attack, Russia brought equipment and military personnel onto the platform. There were no civilians there, he stressed. According to the reports, the fire on the gas platform has not been extinguished and as of afternoon, work was underway to put out fire. It should be noted that Sea Baby multi-purpose unmanned surface vehicle, which can cover a distance of a thousand kilometers, has the capacity to carry 900 kilograms of explosives. Russia has accused Britain of being behind Ukraine's remarkable military operation in the Kursk region. Adalbi Shkagoshev, a member of the State Duma Committee of Russia, told Russian media outlets, Britain participated in all such sorties. English was heard. According to the Daily Mail, former British military intelligence officer Philip Ingram said, the mini-invasion targeted an area where Russian defenses are weak. Ukraine has embarrassed Putin and the Russian military. They've brought the war to ordinary Russians and set the conditions for negotiations. It is too early to tell Ukraine's ultimate objectives, but on the surface it could be a masterstroke if they can continue the advance and hold off Russian counter-attacks. He added, Ukrainian incursions into Russian territory have been extremely rare since Russia launched its full-scale invasion in February 2022. Ukrainian MP Oleksiy Honcharenko said on Facebook that while he did not know what the plan behind the incursion was, it would show Europeans and Americans that Russia can and needs to be attacked. Russia's military response to the incursion will be one of Andrei Belousov's first big leadership tests as the country's new defense minister after he replaced his long-serving predecessor, Sergei Shoigu, in May. The Pentagon has expressed no concern regarding the advance of Ukrainian forces in Russia's Kursk Oblast, the Pentagon's press service reports. No, because at the end of the day, Ukraine is fighting for its sovereign territory that its neighbor invaded. So if we want to de-escalate tensions, as we've said from the beginning, the best way to do that is Putin can make that decision today to withdraw troops from Ukraine. Sabrina Singh, deputy spokesperson for the Pentagon, stated when asked about the potential escalation of tensions due to Ukrainian forces entering Kursk Oblast. The Pentagon spokesperson stressed that Ukraine is doing everything possible to continue liberating its sovereign territory and the events in Kursk Oblast fit into this scenario. We're going to continue to support Ukraine with the capabilities and the systems that they need. We don't feel that this is escalatory in any way. Ukraine is doing what it needs to do to be successful on the battlefield, Singh said. The spokesperson emphasized that Ukraine's advance in Kursk Oblast aligns with U.S. policy, though she noted that the U.S. remains opposed to long-range strikes on Russian territory. Several influential Russian military bloggers blasted the country's army leaders for failing to thwart a major Ukrainian cross-border raid, according to Kyiv Post media outlet. Ukrainian troops, tanks and armored vehicles stormed into Russia's southwestern Kursk region, forcing Moscow to rush in reserves and deploy drones, aviation and artillery to counter the attack. It was one of the most serious border incursions by pro-Kyiv fighters and brought Russia's army bosses in for criticism after failing to learn the lessons from previous attacks. The enemy has been accumulating forces for two months, the influential Rybar channel, which has links to Russian troops, said in a post. For two months, the full information was sent to the useless headquarters. There was enough time to make an appropriate decision, it added. The attacks still being felt on Wednesday evening are one of the first major tests for Russia's new defense minister, Andrei Belousov. In May, he replaced Sergei Shoigu, who was blamed for a string of Russian military setbacks since the start of the Ukraine offensive in 2022. Several other defense ministry officials have been removed or arrested on corruption charges. But the man in charge of army operations in Ukraine, Chief of the General Staff Valery Gerasimov, also detested by many of the military bloggers, remained in place. In light of the Kursk incursion, Rybar and others criticized the decision to break up the combat management system. 
The Russian military leadership continue to make mistakes and lie, another influential blogger, Anastasia Kashevarova, said. Every day they make mistakes that cost our fighters their lives, she wrote on Telegram. The War Gonzo channel, run by Semyon Pegov, welcomed that Gerasimov was shown on state television in a meeting with President Vladimir Putin as it meant he would be directly responsible for resolving the mistakes. We have long lacked public responsibility, he said. Criticism of the offensive from military bloggers used to be common but has become rarer lately as the Kremlin has clamped down on public dissent. The bloggers shot to prominence in the first few months of the Ukrainian offensive with searing criticism of Moscow's military bosses alleging ineptitude and corruption.